Hi there, I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Pattern Studio. If you're someone who would like to learn how to make and adjust patterns for fit and style, you're in exactly the right place. Now last week we talked about four key things that will get you to a better fit faster. You'll remember from that video that taking a few key body measurements, knowing your cup size, and taking a few pattern measurements can help you choose the correct pattern size to start with and guide you in what adjustments you may need to make before you stitch up a sample. Now this week I wanted to explain why it works. So let's take a look at that pattern I was working on and I'll show you. So here we have the shirt that I was working on last week. It's the Juliet Woven Shirt by Style Arc. And what I did was take four body measurements. These four body measurements helped me determine my size, determine if I needed a cup size adjustment, which I pretty much knew I would have to, and also make some other final adjustments that really got me into stitching my sample up really, really quickly. So I took four body measurements. The first one was the shoulder to shoulder point or the shoulder width measurement. The second is the high bust girth and the bust girth, which allow me to determine my cup size and my hip girth, if I, just to be able to check if I need to make some final adjustments to that. Now the other measurement that I forgot to mention that I did take, which I think is important, is the center back neck to waist measurement. And this is because putting the waistline in the correct position will often alleviate some of the problems you sometimes get with the hip girth being too small. So in other words, if the center back neck to waist is too long on your body, you'll find that your hip girth will appear too tight. So put, putting the center back neck to waist position in the correct place on your pattern is really gonna make all the difference. Now the lucky thing for me was is that the pattern measurement was very, very close to my actual center back neck to waist personal body measurement, which then didn't cause any problems for my work. But I do recommend that you take this measurement on your body and compare it to the pattern. So I just wanted to cover quickly how to measure your pattern for your shoulder width to begin with. And this is a simple measurement that's going to go from center back to the shoulder point. And I want to just reiterate here that this measurement can really only be taken if you have a standard set in sleeve. And what I mean by standard set in sleeve is one that looks exactly like this. The shoulder seam is sitting on top of the shoulder. The armhole seam at this point here is going to be sitting right at the ball joint of your arm. And it's kind of fitting normally like any shirt or jacket would. Now, if you have a dropped shoulder or some fancy styling, let's say it's a raglan sleeve instead, this measurement is gonna be almost impossible to take. You're going to have to rely on something else, which I'll show you in a minute. If it's a set-in sleeve, simply take your pattern measurement from the shoulder point to center back and then multiply it by two. This is going to give you your shoulder to shoulder measurement on your pattern. And you can see here that mine measures 15 and a half on this size 10 style art pattern. And now I can go back quickly and compare that to my personal body measurement. So my personal mod body measurement was 15. The pattern measures 15 and a half. This indicates that I have half inch of ease in the shoulder. This just happens to be perfect for a standard type garment like this. I love that it is a half inch. This tells me that I've chosen size 10, which is the right size for me. Now, once I choose the size, what I need to do is go and determine how many changes I'm gonna have to make to the rest of the pattern. Because if this is gonna tell me that it's going to fit me in the shoulder, but I may need to make adjustments somewhere else. So I picked the size 10. The shoulder, which happens to be listed here on the style arc um, body measurements, is exactly the same as mine. So I know now that I've chosen the correct size. The pattern measurement confirms it, and the body measurement on the size chart confirms it. I've got the right size in the size 10. If I go along the size chart, I can see here, oh, the sleeve's probably gonna fit pretty well too. 
so I can actually keep there. So I know I don't really need to make a big adjustment to the sleeve. But we get, when we get to the bust, waist, and hip, you can see here that I am about two to three inches larger than the size 10 pattern. Right away, this tells me I'm gonna to need to make adjustments here. I'm going to make a bust adjustment because I can see here that my cup size is D but the pattern is a B cup size. So I can now know that making a bust adjustment of two inches is going to give me the measurement I need in the bust. Now, once I do my bust adjustment, I'm also going to be ending up adding two inches to the waist and the hip. That is just the nature of the way a standard bust adjustment is done. So. This tells me that in the waist, I'm gonna be okay, but I might need a little bit more measurement in the hip. So I'm probably gonna make a little bit extra adjustment to the pattern in the hip line area after I've completed the bust adjustment. So this is how I quickly determined what size to cut and what pattern adjustments I'm going to need to make. Now, lucky for me, as I said, my center back neck to waist measurement, I didn't need to adjust because it was already at 14 and a half inches, which is actually a little bit shorter than mine, but it's fine. It being a little bit high actually worked in my favor um, because it just is going to kind of skim over my hips a little bit better. So that's how I determined the size. That's how I measured the pattern and compared the pattern um, company's body measurements to my body measurements. So I determined what my size is and I've also determined what initial adjustments I'm going to need to make very, very quickly. So once I make those pattern adjustments, I can pretty much go straight to cutting up a sample or in my case, as I mentioned, is I went straight to cutting it into my real fabric which I never do and I don't recommend it but I really wanted to get something cut and sewn um, in you know a day or two rather than taking a week to try to get through the fitting process so I really fast-tracked it so this is why I wanted to share it with you because it is possible to fast-track it if you kind of know where you're going with it now let's go over the reason choosing your pattern size according to your shoulder width works and it has to do with how patterns are initially developed. Now here we have an example of a basic bodice block draft. The draft is created using a set of personal body measurements. The body measurements are then segmented into smaller measurements in order to assign a portion of the measurement to either the front or the back of the body. Now most drafting systems use the bust girth as the basis for the draft and make an assumption that the front bust is one inch larger than the back bust. Now anyone with a cup size that's larger or smaller than a B cup knows that this doesn't work for everyone. So it becomes a really unreliable measurement to base your pattern cho size choice on. So those with a larger cup size will find that the front will be too small and the back too large, while those people with a smaller cup size will find that the front is too large and the back too small. Now consider this, the upper portion of the back is drafted using direct measurements, so not a standardized proportion. The shoulder width is basically a combination of the neck width the shoulder length, and the dart volume that's needed to create the back shoulder dart. The across back width on the draft is a direct measurement of the across back measurement on your body. So that's that measurement that goes from arm crease to arm crease on the back of your body. And it's indicated here on the draft. Since all of these measurements directly correspond to those specific areas of the body, you can be sure that this area will fit if it corresponds to your measurements. So there you have it. I hope that gives you just enough information to keep you moving forward with your sewing projects. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about drafting for your personal body measurements, I'm currently working on a new online course to develop your personal bodice block. You can head over to the in-house pattern studio website to learn more about it. And you can even sign up to get notified when the course goes live. 
So there you have it. I really hope that the information I shared with you today will help you get to a better fit faster. If you have any comments or questions, please just comment below or you can send me an email. I'm always happy to hear from you.